Hey guys, welcome back to the Russell Westcott Podcast. So, hope you're doing well today. Today is going to be one more of those uh, solo session. Maybe it's going to be a little bit shorter of a session here. It's going to be the ones in between the longer form podcast and the longer form interviews. It's just one to just, you know, give you a little bit of fire, maybe just a little quick little insight, a little tip, you know, let's try and keep them uh, short and maybe I'll launch them and release them on Fridays. We'll call them Friday Fire or something like that. So, hey guys, hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you one. Thank you all for all the wonderful comments and feedback. The podcast is growing. We're getting an incredible amount of shares and guys just loving all the interactivity. And you know what? Uh, I'm actually recording this one video as well, but uh, might just be audio only. And, you know, because I've been told I have a, uh, a face for, for podcasting. Oh, hang on. Wait for it. <laughs> All right, guys. So so let's get after it. Today's um, podcast episode is called, Do You Have a Beginner's Mindset? Or maybe a better, ter- better title would be, Always Have a Beginner's Mindset with Everything You Do. So here's a quick backstory before we dive into some of the uh, lessons and some of the insights into this. So I was working with one of my clients, and one of my clients um, was out of Toronto, and uh, you know what? They, for for better part of three, four years, they were going to all the seminars and, you know, reading all the books and just doing lots of uh, education. Now, I 100% believe you need to have the education. Education is a foundation. Education is a cornerstone. Education is the fantastic first step to um, becoming successful in real estate. You always want to educate yourself. And no matter what level you're at, you're always educated educating yourself in real estate. But what had happened was this person was getting a little bit stuck. They were getting a little bit stuck in uh, the education and they weren't taking action. So one of the things we did was we really just, uh, as part of working together, got them to just get off the stop reading books thing. It's like we now need to start by doing. And here's the thing, you know, They had all the tools, they had all the resources, they had the capital, they had everything they needed to to do to to, to move forward with real estate, but they were just paralyzed with all the options. And sometimes you just need to hone down into what's the next step. Like here, and I use this analogy quite a bit, is one of the reasons why I love to shop at Costco is because sometimes at Costco, when you're sitting there on the shelf, you have a big one and you have a little one. Pick one because the magic happens in the decision. The magic happens in going all in on a strategy. The magic happens by just diving head, uh, diving feet first, both feet first into the action. Okay, so cl- backstory remember, client reading books not moving forward, decided that they were going to actually start writing an offer. And that, to my, in my opinion, I call that, you know, um, a critical success event in real estate. There is an old, uh, um, an old saying, an old term, and I think it was actually in the book that I co-authored, um, 97 Tips for Canadian Real Estate Investor, is one of the tips in there was called a critical success event. Now, a critical success event is one of those things that essentially it starts the dominoes going. You know, if I was sitting here, and let's use a football analogy. A critical success in football would be getting first downs. The more first downs you get, the more you can keep moving the ball down the field. So there, in any endeavor, there's always those few things those few activities, the linchpins, if you will, that hold it all together. Within real estate, the critical success event and a linchpin is writing an offer. So I got this client connected and hooked up with a fantastic property source, presented some fantastic opportunities, and they had to write an offer. And here's the story about the beginner's mindset. So the client came back and they were so nervous and they were so scared about the offer. And they came back and the day after they wrote the offer, we had one of our sessions and he came back and he said, Russell, I was so nervous last night and I was so scared. I could barely sleep. My hand was shaking so much. And so one of our, our sessions, we actually went through the offer and I could just see the excitement in his eyes. I could see the 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 enthusiasm. He was just alive and he was on fire because he wrote that offer. Okay. That's the point I'm trying to get to. So, so 
here's what it was. We were sitting there, we we're going through the offer and I was sitting there and I was kind of watching his energy and I was feeding off of that. And I was just like, this is all exciting. But then I started going, okay, now just slow down, relax. This is really simple. It's easy, standard. You know, I was using all these languages of no big deal, walk in the park, done this hundreds of times. And I had to catch myself. I had to catch myself that did I normalize the writing of the offer within myself? Here's uh, an investor that had a beginner's mindset that was just on fire, that was just so incited about what they were doing. And, you know, uh, we always like to, you know, joke around and say that, you know, you shouldn't have exciting investments. But you know what? What the heck, guys? We're, we're humans. Let's get excited about this thing called real estate. So, Here's all the lessons that I want to share with you on this podcast episode is, guys, do you approach everything with a beginner's mindset? No different than the client I was working with in Toronto. Um, he approached it with a beginner's mindset and he was excited. He paid attention to all the details. He made sure every I was dotted and every T was crossed. He read every single line of the, of the document. He had all his documents in a row when he had to go apply for financing, the inspection, the checklist. He was going through it very thorough because he had a beginner's mindset. So some of you that might be listening to this podcast or maybe even watching the video, you might be getting a little complacent. You might be getting a little complacent on, oh, I've written hundreds of these things. Yeah, it's just another one like that. Like, And here's the, the um, message that I want to challenge you with is bring a beginner's mindset to everything you do, whether that's um, how you interact with your, maybe your accountant, how you interact with your property manager, how you write your offers, how you, um, you know, buy properties, how you report to all the people within your organization, how you lead, always have a beginner's mindset because you will pay more attention and you will make sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And a beginner's mindset is a powerful, exciting attitude to uh, have and to as a mindset to keep moving forward. And even if you've done something hundreds and hundreds of times, Maybe just having a beginner's mindset will actually make you relook at the things that you've done hundreds of times, and you maybe you'll find a new way to do it a little bit more creative, or maybe you'll find a way that you can do it a little bit quicker, or maybe you find a way that it can have a little bit more efficiencies, as opposed to just mailing it in and going through the process. You will have a beginner's mindset, and that beginner's mindset will always keep things fresh and exciting, and you will just keep moving forward with velocity. Now, here's the here's the pro ninja tip is that beginner's mindset. And when you share that with others, people feed off of that and people feed off the energy you bring into a transaction. And if you treat your hundredth deal like you've just bought it and it's your first property and you're maybe working with a new money partner, they will sense that excitement in your voice. They will sense that excitement about what you're bringing to the transaction. You will give them confidence to work with you. You will exude an energy. You will exude confidence in moving forward with this transaction. Okay, guys, I wanted to keep this one nice and tight and short and uh, and hope you enjoy this. Wherever you're watching this or listening to this podcast, make sure you share it, uh, leave a comment, leave a feedback. And guys, until the next one, Make sure you always leave people feeling inspired, encouraged, and always come from a place of love. Okay, guys, bye for now. 